If you just give me 10 minutes, I'm gonna fix your Go Ahead Level website because chances are you're making at least one of these four common mistakes I see on Go Ahead Level websites. And after helping over 100 businesses with their Go Ahead Level websites, I see these four common mistakes all the time. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the four mistakes, but more importantly, how to fix them from easiest to hardest. One of the things that I usually notice about Go Ahead Level websites is they all kind of look boring, they all kind of look similar, they all kind of look the same in a way. And I think one of the reasons why is because they're using very generic fonts. And so what I'm gonna do is show you how I find really cool fonts and how I use them in Go Ahead Level. So the first thing you wanna do is go to Google and type Font Finder Chrome Extension. And this is a cool extension that you can add to your browser and it's gonna let you scan websites and find out what type of fonts they're using. So that's step one. So let me show you an actual example. So whenever I come across a cool website and I wanna find out what type of font they're using, I can use this extension, which is very cool, very handy, and it'll tell me what type of font they're using. Now, let me show you another example. Like I came across this website recently and I thought, wow, this is a really cool heading. Let me find out what type of font it is. They're using TT Commons Classic. Well, let's say you're looking for something more elegant. So I came across this website. You can find out they're using Domain Display Narrow. So that's just a good way of finding out new fonts, fonts that are not typically used in Go Ahead Level. But how do you even find out if these fonts exist in the Go Ahead Level website editor? So an easy way to find out is just go to Google Fonts and the thing is, Go Ahead Level uses Google Fonts. So any fonts that exist here are most likely gonna be on Go Ahead Level. So let me show you how I go about this. So I came across this website very recently and I thought this heading looked really cool. So what I'm gonna do is scan it and it says that they're using Inter Display. So I'm gonna go to Google Fonts very quickly and type Inter and as you can see, this font actually exists. So you can see kind of what it looks like when it's light regular, italic, medium, bold, all this stuff. And you can actually see what it looks like. And when you go back to Go High Level, you can start using this font. So that's how you stop using very generic fonts. Just browse around, find some new ideas, find some inspiration, use that font finder. And so that's why using unique fonts that make you stand out are gonna elevate your website to the next level. So I was recently looking at a client's website. They wanted me to do an audit of their Go Ahead Level website. And I noticed that the readability was really hard. Now it's not this website. This is just another example that I found, but it was something like this where you can't really see the font. It's hard to tell what's what. You don't know where your eyes should look at. And it's just, has a bad readability. So I'm gonna show you how I fix this with a quick example. So I'm gonna show you by building this live and I'm gonna show you how I would improve readability on this specific section. So there's a few ways to improve readability. The first one is by having different fonts for different sections. So let's say we wanted the headline to stand out. I could go here and change the type of font. Now this one is not gonna make a big difference, but if I pick something completely different, let's say this right here, as you can see, compare this one to this one side by side, this one is much easier to read. I can see that this is sticking out, easier to read, and I know that this is the headline, and then after that, I'm gonna skim through and see the bullet points. Now, if we go back and keep the same font, I'm gonna show you a second way of improving readability. The second way of doing this is by having more hierarchy when it comes to sizes. So, I'm gonna change the size Let's say I wanted to make this like 30. Now, all of a sudden, I can kind of tell that this is a headline and this is the text. Now, it's not very great. I can still keep improving the readability and that's when I would use something like the font weight. So let's say I wanted to make this bold. All of a sudden, it's much easier to read than this one right here. Now, another thing we can do to improve readability is add padding. So if I go here, I go to styles, let's say I add like 20 for now. I can see that this is much easier. My eyes can just look at the heading and then I can read the paragraph right after. And the last thing I could do is just fix the colors to make something stand out. So the first thing we could do is change the color of the heading. And I'm gonna show you an extreme example. Let's say like this blue right here. So now it kind of sticks out more. Does it make sense in this section? I don't think so. So I'm gonna go back to black. But another thing we could do is change the color of the paragraph to be something lighter. So it's much easier to read. And here's a perfect example of what that would look like. So you can see both sections 
same content, same everything, but just by using hierarchy, we can make a section much easier to be consumed. Another mistake that I usually notice with Goheel level websites is they typically look pretty flat. And so the experience for a user is pretty poor. So if you look at this website, this is a good example. Everything just looks like completely flat. There's no good user experience. There's nothing that interacts, no feedback, no depth. And so I'm gonna show you how I fix this with Goheel level. So let me show you a few examples of how I fix this with my websites using depth and animations. So the first one that I wanted to show you is how we can use depth like shadows to make something stand out. And so as you can see like this three highlights, but I purposely used a bit of shadow so that they stand out from the website. So in go ahead level, what this looks like is something like this. So if you click on the element, you'll notice that if you go to styles, you'll find the border, which is something you can do like add a border, but you can also scroll down and add shadow. So when it comes to shadow, I played around. These are my settings for this specific section, but it makes it stand out a bit. And so that's just one element that you can use to make your website not look so flat. Another way to do this is by adding animations to specific sections. So if I scroll down, you'll see we have these features right here, but when I hover, it kind of zooms out and it almost looks like it's 3D. So how we do this is by adding a bit of code on the back end to animate this. This is very simple and we have tutorials. I've done this tutorial multiple times on my YouTube channel. I'll throw it right now on the screen so you can see how to do it, but it's very simple. And if you just want to buy all of our tutorials, you can check out our Notion doc link in bio. But this is how we do this. And so look at the difference between this and just the other website that I showed you of the plumber that look completely flat. This website just stands out more. It's more interactive, better user experience, and just subtle details like this are gonna make a big difference. Now, let me show you the third thing you can do to improve this and add some user experience, some feedback to your websites. This is very simple. It's just by adding animations to your buttons. So let me show you how I do this. If you click on your button, just go to animations, and then you're gonna add a hover animation. There's two of them. There's the wobble, which you'll see it, and then there's elevate. For me, I just like elevate way better. This is the one that I usually use, but that's why it looks cool when you hover on certain buttons. That's how I do it. Now, here's another way as well to make it more interactive. And so it doesn't look like just a flat sheet of paper, but it actually looks like an interactive website. So this is also done with code. I have a tutorial on my YouTube channel where if you hover on a section, it expands and it hides the others. So this is just another way. I wanted to show you a few different examples. I have a tutorial, I'll throw it up on the video and you can watch it at the end of the video or after this one, but that's how you do some of these sections as well. And the last way to do this is, you know how I showed you about the shadows, about depth, there's another way to make a section pop even more. And so this was also done with code. I also have a tutorial on my YouTube channel, which you can follow. But if you wanted to add even those subtle details of the gradients, like a glow gradient for a specific section, this is for a funnel that I created for a YouTube video. But when you hover on the VIP admission package, it just glows yellow, which is really cool. So there is just four or five different ways which you can add depth and animations to your websites to make it that much better. A couple of months ago, I came across a website on Gohead level and to say that it was confusing was an understatement. And so it's not this website. I just found this just to show you an example. Um, it was much better than this website, actually. This is even worse. But it was so confusing, lots of text, lots of CTAs, forms, calendars, opt-ins, newsletters, just a bunch of different CTAs. And I just, the more I scrolled, the more I kept looking at the website, the more I confused I got. And so that happens to a lot of Gohead level websites. I've seen multiple websites that are just very confusing. I don't know what they're optimizing for. And as a visitor, when you come across one of those websites, you just don't know what to do, how to interact, how to book their services, how to book a call. It's just gonna tank your conversions. So I'm gonna show you a couple different industries so you see how we can optimize optimize differently for each different website. Here's a good example. This is a funnel that I showed you that I created for a YouTube video. But if I scroll down, you'll notice that there's one button, which is reserve your spot. And that button takes you to the bottom of the page, which is just join the eight figure personal brand challenge, which is just 97 or 297. So for me, I can scroll through the website. I can see what they're selling. I see the VSL. I see reserve my spot. And everything takes me to this one CTA. For me, it's very easy to know what I'm supposed to do in this funnel. This is a good example of what a good website, a good funnel looks like. Let me show you a completely different example. This is one of our SaaS websites that we created a while back. 
and as you can see you can scroll down check the features all that stuff but everything is leading you to get started and what does get started mean get started just means start a 14-day free trial because we're trying to optimize for free trials so that people become paying clients later on for our software that's it very simple very easy to navigate as you can see all everything is leading to get started and as a user for me it's very easy to just start my 14 day free trial now here's a completely different example going from software to a hair salon so the cta is very different now we're optimizing to book now we're trying to drive people to book an appointment and get their hair done so completely different industries but as you can see knowing how to optimize your website so that you can maximize conversions is really important. If people are getting lost, if people don't know how to interact with your website, they don't know what they're meant to do, then you're just gonna tank your conversions. So for this one, we made it very simple. There's one button, book now, and that takes you to a calendar where people can book their hair appointments. So different industries, different ways to do this, but those are the top four mistakes that I usually see on Go High Level websites. If you are a business and you need a high-end website built on Go High Level, click the first link in bio, or if you're an agency, you just wanna buy one of our templates, click the second link in my bio.